So in the first part, we're asked to find out where the nodes are. And the nodes occur where we've got zero amplitude. So with our standing wave, which looks a bit like this, we need these points where the amplitude's zero. And the equation for our standing wave is 2a sine kx cos omega t. So this cos omega t just varies between 1 and minus 1. So what we need is the points where this part is equal to zero. The amplitude for the incoming waves can't be zero, otherwise we wouldn't have a wave. So what we actually need is that sine kx is equal to zero. And so this will occur when kx is equal to zero, or it can be equal to 180 degrees or pi radians, then 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, 3 pi radians, 4 pi radians, etc. And k, that's got the same meaning it always has in this topic, it's the wave number, so it's 2 pi over lambda. Okay, so we've got kx is equal to 2 pi over lambda x and it's equal to 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, just integer multiples of pi. And what we're trying to do is work out x in terms of lambda. So we can multiply both sides by lambda on 2 pi and we end up with x is equal to 0 and then we've got pi times lambda over 2 pi and then we've got 2 pi times lambda over 2 pi and then we've got 3 pi times lambda over 2 pi, 4 pi times lambda over 2 pi. So now we can simplify this down a bit. So we've got 0, these pi's cancel out, so we end up with lambda over 2. Then these cancel out, so we end up with lambda. These pi's cancel out, and we have 3 over 2 lambda. And these cancel out, leaving a factor of 2, so we've got 2 lambda. So this tells us that these nodes occur every half wavelength. So one loop from here to here is lambda over 2. So if we actually want to measure the wavelength for a standing wave, we need to measure two loops and that will give us the wavelength for one wave. Okay, B, we're then asked to find antinodes. So these antinodes occur halfway between the nodes. So they occur on these red crosses here where we've got the maximum amplitude. So the fast way to do it is to realize that the antinodes are halfway between the nodes and then we can just divide our answer for x here by two. So halfway between zero and lambda on two is lambda on four. Halfway between lambda on two and lambda is three lambda on four. So that's one way to do it. The longer way to do it is to realize that the antinodes, these will occur when this term is maximum, and that'll be when sine kx is equal to plus or minus 1. So that occurs when kx is equal to 90 degrees, which is pi on 2, and then 270 degrees, which is 3 pi on 2. Five pi on two, seven pi on two, etc. And then again, k is equal to two pi on lambda, so we've got two pi on lambda x is equal to pi on two, three pi on two, five pi on two, seven pi on two. Okay, let's cancel the pi's out now, and then we can rearrange this to get the x. So x is equal to lambda divided by 4 is what we get from this one. Here we're dividing by lambda on 2, so we end up with 3 lambda on 4. Here we end up with 5 lambda on 4, 7 lambda on 4, etc. So again, the distance between two antinodes is lambda on 2. And so if we want to measure one wavelength, we need to take two of these loops. 